Okay, so I thought I'd do a little update on this Harbor Freight uh, trailer since I've had it for a few years now. Just to let you know what's going on. Still uh, using it, uh, still hanging in there. No major complaints really. I have not had these uh, wooden sides off since I built it. As you see, mainly what I use it for is just to uh, bring this free mulch back from the local landfill and then the whole brush around the property here. Um, these brackets here. You should probably notice from original video, and thanks to somebody pointing it out to me, I had it on backwards. Apparently I couldn't tell an L from an R, so I got that straightened out now. That's cool. I haven't had a chance to make use of these uh, D-rings yet, since I've never had the sides off and never had to strap anything down, but they do come in handy for uh, running the bungee cores through there to hold the tarp down on top. Kitty loves the mulch too, so hopefully I don't find any surprises in here when I'm uh, spreading this out in the next couple of days. Right, Sonny? Oh, Sonny's exploring. Yeah, so here you can see the original paint is not holding up very well to the sun, to the ultraviolet. This is what I sprayed on to cover the new metal and the uh, grinding down from where the welding was done. This is just Rust-Oleum here. This is holding up pretty well. Now underneath the trailer where there's no sunlight exposure, you know, the red's still holding up fine, the original paint. I would suggest if you get one of these, probably just want to take and bite the bullet when you have it there in the box before you put it together, just rough it up and put a couple coats of some good paint on there. Because to have to tear it down and paint it later is going to be a lot more work than just doing it up front. So here you can see even on the uh, fender here, the original manufacturer's black paint has faded pretty well in the sun. Yeah, so the tires are holding up okay. I've got a little bit of crack in here. This thing's probably sat for like a year. I think one of these two tires started to lose a little bit of air. It didn't go completely flat. I was kind of surprised these tires uh, take 80 PSI. I never realized that before. And it confirms it on the uh, sticker up here on the side of the trailer, the manufacturer sticker. I'm running them at about 35 with no problem, so I think I'm going to go ahead and take them up a little bit higher next time and see how it works out. These are not radial tires, as you probably noticed. One guy did comment that he uh, had to replace his, so he got radials, and the thing runs a whole lot better, as I expect it would. So something to consider there for future use as well. Yeah, these little uh, washers I went on is the bolt so you can get them out. They're holding it pretty good. None of them have broken off yet, so that's a good sign. Of course, I haven't had no reason to take this off yet, but still, still hanging in there. Yeah, so there's a jack stand. I don't think I had it welded on when I did the first video. I've had it welded on since, and uh, no problems there. As I noted in my wood splitter video, they have one almost identical to that with the addition of a grease zerk that this one doesn't have. And it's a Reese, and I think it was like a dollar less than this one at Harbor Freight. So if you have a tractor supply close to you, there's another option to look. This oak I used for the sideboards, if you recall, was a result of Irene the Hurricane. All the downed oak trees here. I saved a couple and had them milled up, so they're still holding up pretty well. They haven't uh, really warped or split too badly. I'm pretty pleased with that. Now this um, pine that I got from the Mennonites here locally, I knew it had a little bit of termite damage when I first got it because it had been sitting outside. The guy gave them to me pretty cheap anyway, but I just uh, had a big hammer in my hand the other day and for some reason I felt the need to destroy something so I busted this out of here. I guess I was trying to get this guy off and I wanted to see how rotted it was, but there's some deterioration in there, but these are still going to hold up for me for another two or three years. And when they finally go, I'm just going to go ahead and get a piece of 4x8 uh, by 3 quarter inch thick pressure treated plywood and bolt that down. That will be my solution. That's what I would have done originally if I hadn't had these laying around. Here you can see I use this little uh, plastic tubing to go around the cables just to keep them protected so they don't get torn up accidentally. I think I bought it at Advance Auto here for a couple dollars, but I had some in the front there where the tongue of the trailer is. You know, the wires leading up to the uh, the vehicle. This was all covered here. You can basically see wherever it was in the uh, exposed to the UV sunlight just completely des deteriorated and disintegrated into a pretty much nothing so that stuff was not UV safe. So if you're going to do that make sure you uh, get something that is UV compatible or UV resistant I guess they would say. I did notice in the uh, new ones they're selling now that they're uh, foldable for one thing and plus they now have a crossbar here running somewhere like you know from here over to here and it's just bolted on like everything else on the trailer so I don't know if it has some kind of problem or not 
There's a full load in this right now. It doesn't give any, but I did notice that it does flex a little bit when there is no load on the trailer, so I have some angle irons laying around. Maybe when I get the single load, I'll go ahead and weld one across here just for the heck of it. You know, with mine, this thing's supposed to you know, dump, if you will, by pulling pins out here, but I decided it really wasn't a good idea for me. And I just went ahead and put bolts in there, so having a permanent bolt there might contribute to being a little more stable than the ones that just have the uh, the linchpin put through there. This is what I was talking about earlier. When the uh, tractor is out of the factory, they just put a pin through here so this thing can take and you know, flip up. And that's sort of like a, uh, like a dump cart, if you will. I just decided to go ahead and put a permanent bolt on there. Yeah, so even my wells for these little um, pockets are held. I'm pretty pleased with that. If you recall, this is actually my work first uh, welding experience ever. I bought that little wire-fed welder from Northern Tool and uh, started learning how to do it. There is actually quite a bit of force on these guys because uh, these 2x4s are you know, pressing out because of all the mulch in here and right now it's soaking wet so you can see how they're angled out right now. But still hanging in there. Just take a look up underneath the deck. You see the metal still looks pretty uh, reasonable. You see what I mean? Really the uh, paint hasn't failed underneath where it's not exposed to the sunlight. Well, there's a little bit of rust forming. Actually, the paint's peeling pretty bad there, so I probably should uh, reverse where I just sawed. That's going to need some maintenance. Yeah, actually the paint's fading, coming off over here. Well, it's probably time to do a little closer inspection and uh, do some touch-up on this. I'm glad I came down here to look. <laughs> Yeah, actually, now I look closer at it, you can see the uh, paint starting to fill the whole way along here. Hmm. You actually just notice this, actually the paint is falling back here too. It's all on this bracket that holds the, uh, the leaf spray. So they must not have primed it very well or prepared it or something. Be my guess. I'll check the other side here. See, now on this side, uh, the paint doesn't seem to be peeling. It's just faded from the sun, but it must have just been that one piece of metal wasn't prepared properly. The back is uh, the back of the side of where the welding was done to put those brackets on. Of course the paint came off so I just took it and scraped off the loose paint and hit it with some uh, rust with a brush there just to keep it from rusting. So here you can see this cable management wrap. It still looks fine underneath here where it's not exposed to the sun. Actually I can see there's some more uh, paint failure up here in the very front. So yeah I would definitely say if you get one of these guys unless they've improved things I'd probably repaint it before you assemble it. Get some good solid paint on there. Especially if any places where the paint's nicked and uh, may become a point for a defect in the future like this. I guess one of the things I really like about this trailer is the uh, small footprint with that 4x8 frame. It's pretty easy to hook it up to the uh, tractor and tow it through the yard. Take the mulch to where I need it to be. No need to go out and purchase a separate little utility cart to tow behind the, behind the machine. Okay, so just one last comment. Yeah, I got a postcard in the mail a couple weeks ago from Harbor Freight. For some reason, they had a recall on that trailer because the government pinged them on something to do with the uh, lighting cut. And to tell you the truth, I forgot what it was. They said, do you still own this trailer and do you want this uh, new lighting kit? And I said, ah, sure. So I sent it back in. They showed up a few weeks later. When I read the piece of paper about what the problem was, it seemed so trivial, I just kind of laughed. But I don't remember what it was. Something was obstructing something to do with the license plate perhaps. I'm not really sure. Anyway, this is what? Item number 62488. And I don't know if I'll ever find a use for it. I guess I'll see if I can find what the recall is all about. If it was a little more important than I thought, I'll go ahead and put them on. But uh, just a heads up. So I really only have one complaint about this. And it's not really even a complaint with the product itself. It's, I'm here in the state of Maryland. I have to have this guy registered to have it on the road. And it costs me about a hundred dollars a year. Even though I only put it out there on the road maybe you know, two or three times at the most, at least you know, in recent history. So that's quite a bit of money, especially for a trailer that only cost me you know, less than $400 to build. Oh well, what are you going to do? you got to pay the man, right? Yes, yeah, so overall I'm pretty pleased with it. I mean, for the price, it was a great project. It was a lot of fun to do. What do you think of the Harbor Freight trailer, Sonny? Huh? Tell us. Nothing to say? You're pretty happy with it? Yep. Yeah.